Good evening. We're on the 23rd of February 2023, Thursday after Ash Wednesday. It is now 5.50. Yes, 5.50 p.m. And uh, the Bible in one year, day 196. The reading from the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 10, chapter 11, chapter 12. The book of Proverbs, chapter 31, and the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7. Before I begin, I usually pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. O angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love commits me here, ever this night be at my side, to light to God, to rule and guide, Amen. Prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. Defend us in the day of battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust cast into hell Satan and all the other evil spirits, who prowl through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. A reading before reading, sacred scripture, a prayer. Open my heart, O Holy Spirit, to receive your inspired word. Grant me wisdom to understand what you want to teach me, and strength of will to follow wherever you lead. Because I'm very tired, I don't really want to hold the book because of the tiredness. So, because I might drop it. <laughs> I can't help when I'm tired. It's just one of those bad things that I suffer with. Uh, that's part of my cross. So a reading from the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 10, the title, The Revolt Against Rehoboam. <coughs> Excuse me, I'll just have a sip of this water. Rehoboam went to Shechem. For all Israel had come to Shechem to make him king. And when Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, heard of it, for he was in Egypt, whither he had fled from King Solomon. Then Jeroboam returned from Egypt, and they sent and called him. And Jeroboam and all Israel came and said to Rehoboam, Your father made our yoke heavy. Now therefore lighten the hard service, service of your father and his heavy yoke upon us and we will serve you. He said to them, Come to me again in three days. So the people went away. Then King Rehoboam took counsel with the old men who had stood before Solomon, his father, while he was yet alive, saying, how do you advise me to answer this people? And they said to him, If you will be kind to this people and please them, and speak good words to them, then they will be your servants forever. But he forsook the counsel with the young men who had grown up with him and stood before him 
and he said to them, What do you advise that we answer this people who have said to me, Listen, the yoke that your father put upon us and the young men who had grown up with him said to him, Thus shall you speak to the people who said to you, Your father made our yoke heavy, but do you lighten it for us? Thus shall you say to them, My little finger is thicker than my father's loins, and now, whereas my father laid upon you a heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam, the third day, as the king said, Come to me again the third day. And the king answered them harshly, and forsaking the counsel of the old men, King Rehoboam spoke to them according to the counsel of the young men, saying, My father made your yoke heavy, but I will add to it. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. So the king did not hearken to the people, for it was a turn of affairs brought about by God that the Lord, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, might fulfil his word, which he spoke by Ahijah the Shilonite to Jeroboam the son of Nebat. And when all Israel saw that the king did not hearken to them, the people answered the king, What portion have we in David? We have no inheritance in the son of Jesse, each of you to your tents, O Israel. Look now to your own house, David. So all Israel departed to their tents. But Rehoboam reigned over the people of Israel, who dwelt in the cities of Judah. Then King Rehoboam sent Hadoram, who was taskmaster, over the forced labour, and the people of Israel stoned him to death with stones. And King Rehoboam made haste to mount his chariot to flee to Jerusalem. So Israel has been in rebellion against the house of David to this day. The Word of the Lord A reading from the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 11 and the title is Judah and Benjamin Fortified When Rehoboam came to Jerusalem, he assembled the house of Judah and Benjamin, a hundred and eighty thousand chosen warriors, to fight against Israel, to restore the kingdom to Rehoboam, but the word of the Lord came to Shemaiah, the man of God. Say to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, 
and to all Israel in Judah and Benjamin. Thus says the Lord, You shall not go up or fight against your brethren. Return every man to his home, for this thing is from me. So they hearkened to the word of the Lord and returned and did not go against Jeroboam. Jeroboam dwelt in Jerusalem and he built cities for defence in Judah. He built Bethlehem, Etam, Tekoa, Bethzur, Soko, Adolam, Gath, Marishah, Zipf, Adoraim, Lashish, Azakar, Zorah, Ijalon, and Hebron, fortified cities which are in Judah and in Benjamin. He made the fortresses strong and put commanders in them and stores of food, oil and wine. And he put shields and spears in all the cities and made them very strong. So he held Judah and Benjamin. The next title, Priests and Levites Support Rehoboam. And the priests and the Levites that were in all Israel resorted to him from all places where they lived. For the Levites left their common lands and their holdings and came to Judah and Jerusalem because Jeroboam and his sons cast them out from serving as priests of the Lord. And he appointed his own priests for the high places and for the satires and for the calves which he had made. And those who had set their hearts to seek the Lord God of Israel came after them from all the tribes of Israel to Jerusalem to sacrifice to the Lord, the God of their fathers. They strengthened the kingdom of Judah and for three years they made Rehoboam the son of Solomon secure. For they walked for three years in the way of David and Solomon. The next heading, Rehoboam's marriages. Rehoboam took as wife Mahalath, the daughter of Jerimoth, the son of David, and of Abihail, the daughter of Eliab, the son of Jesse. And she bore him sons, Jeush, Shemariah, and Zaham. After her, he took Maka, the daughter of Absalom, who bore him Abijah, Atei, Ziza, and Shelomith. Rehoboam loved Maaka the daughter of Absalom, above all his wives and concubines, he took 18 wives and 60 concubines and had 28 sons and 60 daughters. And Rehoboam appointed Abijah, the son of Maakar, as chief prince among his brothers for he intended to make him king. And he dealt wisely and distributed some of his sons 
through all the districts of Judah and Benjamin, in all the fortified cities, and he gave them abundant provisions and procured wives for them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 12 and the heading is Egypt attacks Judah. When the rule of Rehoboam was established and was strong, he forsook the law of the Lord and all Israel with him. In the fifth year of King Rehoboam, because they had been unfaithful to the Lord, Shishak, king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem with 1,200 chariots and 60,000 horsemen, and the people were without number who came with him from Egypt, Libyans, Sukaim, and Ethiopians, and he took the fortified cities of Judah and came as far as Jerusalem. Then Shemaiah the prophet came to Rehoboam and to the princes of Judah who had gathered at Jerusalem because of Shishak and said to them, Thus says the Lord, you abandoned me, so I have abandoned you to the hand of Shishak. Then the princes of Israel and the king humbled themselves and said, The Lord is righteous. When the Lord saw that they were humbled themselves, the word of the law came to Shemaiah. They have humbled themselves. I will not destroy them, but I will grant them some deliverance, and my wrath shall not be poured out upon Jerusalem by the hand of Shishak. Nevertheless, they shall be servants to him, that they may know my service and the service of the kingdoms of the countries. So Shishak, king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem. He took away the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house. He took away everything. He also took away the shields of gold which Solomon had made and King Rehoboam made in their stead shields of bronze and committed them to the hands of the officers of the guard who kept the door of the king's house. And as often as the king went into the house of the Lord, the guard came and bore them and brought them back to the guard room. And when he humbled himself, the wrath of the Lord turned from him, so as not to make a complete destruction. Moreover, conditions were good in Judah. The next title, Death of Rehoboam. So King Rehoboam established himself in Jerusalem and reigned. Rehoboam was 41 years old when he began to reign and he reigned 17 years in Jerusalem, the city which the Lord had chosen out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there. His mother's name was Naamah, the Ammonites, and he did evil, for he did not set his heart to seek the Lord. 
Now the acts of Rehoboam from first to last are they not written in the chronicles of Shemaiah the prophet and Ido the seer they were continual there were continual wars between Rehoboam and Jeroboam and Rehoboam slept with his fathers and was buried in the city of David and Abijah his son reigned in his stead slept in this case means died for those not familiar with these old fashioned words so I now have to move to um, the Proverbs Proverbs, the book of Proverbs chapter 31 and the title is The Teaching of King Lemuel's Mother The words of Lemuel, king of Massa, which his mother taught him what, my son, what son of my womb, what son of my vows? Give not your strength to women, your ways to those who destroy kings. It is not for kings, O Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine or for rulers to desire strong drink lest they drink and forget what has been decreed and pervert the rights of all the afflicted. Give strong to drink to him who is perishing and wine to those in bitter distress. Let them drink and forget their poverty and remember their misery no more open your mouth for the dumb for the rights of all who are left desolate open your mouth judge righteously maintain the rights of the poor and needy the next title owed to a capable wife a good wife who can find she is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She is like the ships of the merchant. She brings her food from afar. She rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and tasks for her maidens. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. She girds her loins with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her hands to the distaff and her hands hold the spindle. She opens her hand to the poor and she reaches out her hands to the needy. She's not afraid of snow for her household for all her household are clothed in scarlet. She makes herself coverings. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them. She delivers girdles to the merchant. Strength and dignity are her clothing. And she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom 
and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the gates. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now I have to move forward to the gospel. There will be no alleluia. And we're reading from Matthew chapter 7. And the title is Judging Others. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Judge not, that you be not judged. For with the judgment you pronounce you will be judged. And the measure you give will be the measure you get. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, Let me take the speck out of your eye, when there is the log in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. The next title, Profaning the Holy. Do not give dogs what is holy and do not throw your pearls before swine lest they trample them underfoot and turn to attack you. The next title, Ask, Search, Knock. Ask and it will be given you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receives, and he who seeks, finds, and to him who knocks, it will be opened. Or, what man of you, if his son asks him for bread, will give him a stone? Or, if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent. If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, who is in heaven, give good things to those who ask him? So whatever you wish that men would do to you, do so to them. For well, this is the law and the prophets. The next title, the narrow gate. Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction. And those who enter by it are many, for the gate is narrow. And the way is hard, that leads to life, and those who find it are few. The next title, A Tree and Its Fruit. Beware of false prophets 
who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorns or figs from thistles? So every sound tree bears good fruit, but the bad tree bears evil fruit. A sound tree cannot bear evil fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, you will know them by their fruits. The next title, Concerning Self-Deception. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father, who is in heaven, on that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you are evil doers. The next title, Hearers and Doers. Every one of them who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house upon the rock and the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on rock. And everyone who hears these words, these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who has built his house upon the sand. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house. And it fell. And great was the fall of it. And when Jesus finished these sayings, the crowds were astonished at his teaching. For he taught them as one who had an authority and not as their scribes. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for listening. May God bless you and heal you. I'm sending you his peace in abundance. May you be happy and joyful in the Lord. God bless the rest of your evening or your day or your morning, wherever you are. I'm just going to share, after reading sacred scripture, these words. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for the word you have spoken to me through the treasure of the scripture. Make these words a living reality in my life, a constant guide, a lamp for my feet, and a light to my path. Amen. Come, Spirit of Truth, and lead us to the whole truth. Speak to us of Jesus, so that we may speak of him to others. Come, Holy Spirit, and help us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we should, Intercede for us so that the one who sees into our hearts and knows our thoughts may hear our prayers. Glorious Father, give us the Holy Spirit to make us wise so that we may come to know you. Enlighten the eyes of our hearts 
that we may know the hope to which you have called us, the rich blessings you have promised, and how great is your power at work in those who believe. Lord God, fill us with knowledge of your will. Through the wisdom and spiritual understanding your spirit bestows on your faithful ones, so that we may conduct ourselves in a worthy manner. Be fruitful in every type of work and do always what is pleasing to you. God bless you all and thank you so much for listening, especially my regular faithful ones. I do appreciate it. You encourage me and keep me going when I'm exhausted and tired and want to be lazy. God bless. Thank you. Bye-bye.